Start over. Good one. Three, two, one. <laughs> what, what really, really causes, causes weight gain? gain? Go ahead. And today we're gonna. I think that's a good topic right before the holidays when people will talk about how they gain weight over the holidays. So. Yeah, for sure. We. Yeah. Did oh, you plan that? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta fix this camera. It's driving me nuts. Okay. okay. So. What we're doing, for anyone who's new to this, is we're going over a blog that I've written. If you want to read it, we'll send you the link. Or otherwise, you just listen. We will uh, go into a little bit more detail here. I know that people are, I mean, I think I've seen live videos on... <laughs> I'm talking about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I know. Okay. So we're going to go over this, and then we're going to, like, you. if you read the blog, you'll get a lot out of it. If you uh, uh, read it and watch this video, you'll get the most out of it, because we're going to talk a lot more about this without going too far into the weeds. We'll still keep it simple and, and uh, accessible for everybody. Mm -hmm. We'll keep it short too. Yeah, speaking of which, let's go. You're the one talking about other stuff other than the blog. Oh goodness. Do we need to arm wrestle before this so that we I'll can win. prove to everyone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's hard to know the right way to lose weight if you don't have a good grasp on what causes weight gain in the first place. So that's really why I wrote this. And unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation about this topic in general. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cover two sides of it. One is the source of weight gain that happens just slowly and steady, steadily over a long period of time. And then the other side of it is the reason why your weight might go up even when you're on a diet. So you're trying actively to lose weight, but your weight jumps up. So we're gonna cover both sides of that. But we're gonna start with a true story. So, yes. I'm intrigued. Ooh, I think you've heard this story before, but maybe you won't remember I'll just it. pretend, yeah. like I usually do. <laughs> It'll be like when we watch movies together and <laughs> it's one that you've seen, but you don't remember it. Okay. That's so fun. So, when, <laughs> when I was first building our home gym, uh, I bought a used barbell and I bought it from, <laughs> I, I, okay. you already know this story. So, I, and I bought it from a, from a, from a used Marine. I bought it. <laughs> it was retired. A retired Marine, not a used one. I guess, I don't know. I don't know how he feels about it. So anyway, I got it from this Marine and I figured it must, it's got to be a pretty solid piece of equipment, right? Like he was a pretty big dude and you know, a Marine, it's tough. It's like, okay, this is, this is gonna be a good piece of equipment. Now, back at the time when I bought this, I was traveling quite a bit. So I would, um, I'd go to gyms out on the road, I'd work out at home, and whenever I was working out at gyms on the road, I was having a really hard time lifting the same amount of weight as what I could when I was at home. Every workout was so hard, and I was like, man, I know I'm tired, but like, this is, this is rough. And so I finally weighed my barbell, <laughs> the one that I had bought from this rough and tough Marine was 10 pounds lighter than every other barbell in any standard normal gym in the entire world or at least country where I was traveling. <laughs> so why am I telling you this other than that is just kind of a funny story and you can go ahead and have a laugh at my expense. Um, I do. It ties in with what we're talking about, which is one of the things anyway, which is unexpected weight fluctuations. So if you're trying to lose weight, seeing your weight go up, even just a couple pounds can be enough to make you want to give up. And the thing is that this is really common. This happens a lot. And to truly understand it, we have to take a step back and look at why you're in the situation of wanting to lose weight in the first place. So that's why we're going to start with the slow and steady weight gain. And, and I'll just come right out and say it. There is only one thing that causes the type of weight gain that creeps up on you over the years. And it's just overeating, eating too many calories, just eating too much food in general. This can be hard to believe because there are a lot of factors involved that can make it more complicated or at least seem more complicated. I guess in some ways it really does make it more complicated. Um, for example, some people think that there's no way you could gain weight if you only eat healthy food. Oh. Uh, and while it would definitely be more difficult to overindulge <laughs> on, like, say, cauliflower as opposed to cake pops, <laughs> uh, too many calories of either one, is, which is overeating, is still going to cause you to gain weight. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say no, something? No, I don't know that it's a good example. Okay. 
And then there's uh, other people who think that it has more to do with your age. That's something we hear a lot is mm -hmm. I'm older now, my metabolism's slower. What um, should I do about it? And hormones, uh, uh, um, metabolism even without age, just like, mm -hmm. okay, did I damage my metabolism, metabolism, all that type of stuff. Or that just in general that there's something wrong with your body that makes weight gain inevitable. So, and well, like I said, while certain things like that can definitely make it a little bit more complicated and it can for sure make it more difficult to maintain a healthy weight, the actual cause of weight gain still just boils down to the number of calories you eat from day to day, week to week, month to month, and so on. Mm -hmm. And that's good to know too, because it also means that it's impossible to not lose weight if you're in a calorie deficit. <laughs> uh, I, I don't, does that statement come across strong enough to understand like, cause I feel like that's something that's super important to know. Is I think that you should explain it better. If you are in a calorie deficit, meaning if you are eating less calories than you are burning throughout the day, you will lose weight. The, I guess the exception to this would be you could gain some muscle and lose some fat at the same time and then your weight might stay the same, but you're still going to notice a difference like you're in how your clothes fit and mm -hmm. how you feel. So the point is you will still get results and it is, it is literally impossible. Uh, it's one of the laws of thermodynamics <laughs> that if you are, you're not putting in as much energy as what you're putting out and burning calories throughout the day, you will lose weight. It, it has to happen. There's nothing else that can change this. So what I do want to explain though, is why calories don't always work. Because if everything I just said still doesn't add up to you, I know that you are not alone in feeling that way. There are a lot of people who count calories and feel like they still can't get their way to do what they want. Um, and there are two kind of hard truths for, for why this happens. There's probably more than this. These are the main ones. Number one is that there, there's a good chance you're just not tracking your food accurately. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, oftentimes this really isn't through any fault of your own. Calorie counting isn't inherently bad, uh, but it's a more flawed system than what a lot of people realize. And so if you're depending on that counting calories, um, it can let you down without you realizing that you're even doing anything wrong because it's again it's not your fault that well if you've ever looked for like chicken breast and gotten 15 different possibilities yeah if you're using an app calories <laughs> yeah, isn't there you, you you know that it, there is some error in there for yep. sure and i don't know if you you mentioned this about accuracy some people will kill it monday through friday and then not care about it one day and that's all it takes yes. to to not be accurate with it enough to see any results. Yeah. I don't know if you bring that up. No, I don't, but that is a good point. That's another way that tracking inaccurately can happen is just you miss little things here and there, weekends, snacks, you know, picking food off your kids' plates, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So there's a lot of different ways it can happen. The point is it's not necessarily your fault. Maybe it is, <laughs> but I want to just say that like, if this isn't a matter of you're doing something wrong, it's the system's a little bit flawed. And if you don't recognize that going into it, you might have trouble getting results. So that's number one. The other reason why it can seem like calories don't work the way that I'm ex explaining that they should is that you might have been given a bad cal calculation for how much to eat in the first place. Yes. And again, this might not be anyone's fault. Um, there isn't a perfect way to calculate how much you eat. Everybody's totally different. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. Well, when I calculate what my clients should be eating, it's a ball. I tell them it's a ballpark. It's this an is like, educated guess. This is a starting point. We'll go, we could go up, we could go down because there is no math equation unless you have like some fancy, fancy equipment to calculate your metabolic rate. Even then. Even then it's inaccurate to that's going to tell you how fast or how slow your metabolism is so there's just no well, math formula that, that anyone can do that's ever going to give you an accurate number there's more than just metabolism too like yeah there's how many calories you burn is there's multiple factors mm -hmm. involved in that so it can change from day to day yeah which is the other which is the other side of it it's it's going to take some experimenting but even if you get it right it might change over time. Oh, well, it will change over time. So it's, again, yeah. the calculation is, may just be wrong. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You may have gotten a bad one in the first place, or it could be that it changed over time. You stopped getting results and you need to refigure it. I want to add another thing in there. Yeah. Um, the other thing I think that can contribute to a bad calculation is um, apps or equipment that tells you how many calories you burned. Yeah. I think that can give you a very, very inaccurate number of calories oh, yeah. you're burning. And that affects how much food you eat when you play that into if you're counting calories or not. Yeah. Yeah. We don't track that with our yeah. clients or ourselves. It's just a fun number. Yeah. <laughs> All of this can be super frustrating to hear, which I get, and which is why having a coach like us will will help because we give you that outside perspective on being able to kind of look at all the data and track it more effectively. And so we can tell you what changes to make if something's not working because there will be changes that yeah. come up. Um, whether you get help or not, though, the starting point is the same. You have to, in order to come up with a solution that's actually going to work for you, you have to accept the fact that Overeating, even little by little over a long period of time, that's what causes, that is the cause of weight gain. That's it and nothing else. Once you know that, it's easier to implement more effective strategies to help you lose weight. Uh, and I do just want to say real quickly that the answer is not eat less. That's uh, often the advice given is move more, eat less, and that's not the solution necessarily either. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going into that here because that's a totally that's other topic. topic. We do have a free guide that talks about the myths of weight loss, and if you want that, we will send you the link for that because uh, myth number three talks specifically about how eating less is, is not good advice. So, okay, overeating causes weight loss. Now let's talk about those unexpected fluctuations like the barbell for me that was <laughs> totally different than what I thought. <laughs> Same thing, you're on a weight loss journey and you're not expecting anything to be different and all of a sudden, and this can happen many times while you're losing weight, one day your weight goes down, the next day it goes up. And then the next day maybe it goes down again and then the day after that it goes up and maybe it stays up even for a few days. And you hope that it's going to go down again, and maybe eventually it will, but okay, so what's going on here? So when you experience a spike in weight like this, there are a few things to consider. Um, and, and these are the questions you can ask yourself. One, did you indulge in more carbs recently? More than normal. I'm not, I'm not even saying like excessively, just did you happen to have more carbs today than what you normally do? Mm -hmm. Uh, have you worked? So let's make that even more like tangible. Like, did you have go back for seconds on the mashed potatoes, or did you have a treat after dinner? And you normally when, wouldn't. when you normally wouldn't, or are you having one more drink every evening than you normally would? That's what that looks like. Yeah, and again, it's not that it's bad. We're not saying that you did something wrong. That's just something to consider. Another thing is, have you worked out recently? Um, are you weighing yourself at the same time each day? Do you eat your meals on a regular schedule? Mm. Where, uh, was your last meal particularly heavy, like literally in weight or particularly salty? Yeah. When was the last time you went to the bathroom? Or did you eat something that you normally don't eat or a style of food you don't normally eat that can affect yep. as well? Or are you on your period or about to be where you're at in your cycle can affect your weight going up or down? And or has your stress increased recently? Uh, I don't think I put this one in here too, but sleep also, like did you not get a good night's sleep? For sure. That all of these things can cause weight gain, not because you gained fat or because you did anything wrong, but simply because your body is holding on to more water at the moment or because there's more food in your stomach or just waste in your intestines and your body. Uh, and and that will cause that jump in weight, but it's nothing to worry about. It is we're, this is not the same thing as that long term steady weight gain. This is just a temporary bump because of water or food or whatever. It's not bad. Even though the number on the scale went up, you very well may still be losing fat. Totally fine. You may be losing that consistently the number on the scale is just not always going to reflect that. And that's the main point with this is that weight loss is not linear. 
it will not always just, you don't just start losing weight one day and it goes down and down and down from day to day. It's gonna go up and down. So in the meantime, when these unexpected fluctuations in, in weight happen, what should you do about it? So number one, just being aware that your weight is randomly going to jump up and down while losing fat can be a game changer because it takes the pressure off of the daily changes. Yeah. It teaches you to look for those long-term trends. And it's those trends that are gonna tell you what you should do next. So we recommend you weigh yourself every morning, just after using the bathroom. Same time of day, same, whatever you're wearing, just like the same system, essentially. Yeah. Yep, and, and then just get comfortable with those daily changes in your weight. Don't stress over it. Even if your weight stays up for several days, you've gotta be patient with this. Um, since random shifts in your weight are normal, what you have to do is look for the average trend over two to even four weeks to get an accurate assessment of, of your progress, of what's really going on, and to see if what you're doing is working. If you look at only a couple days or even a week, those changes, those fluctuations in the water weight and in the food you have in in your belly, the, all of that can totally change the picture and give you an inaccurate, accurate reading. So you have to have to have more time, more data to look at. That's something we look at as coaches too, is we track that so that we can make sure that you're changing anything immediately that needs to be changed or just making sure you're staying on the right path so we can get to the results. But if you don't have a coach to do it, there's some cool apps out there now that can help you track that weight long-term and help you um, figure out what those tiny little the fluctuations mean. Are. One of my favorites is called Happy Scale. Um, I can't remember if it's free or cost, and I don't get any kickback for it, but I really enjoy it personally, and I think people who have anxiety about the scale, uh, it's designed to just take that anxiety off and, and worry less about those little fluctuations. Well, and that's the whole point of, of this too, whether you're using that app or we're coaching you or you're just doing it on your own, what happens is when you learn to not let those unexpected fluctuations bother you, bother you, you, you follow the patterns, you see every few weeks um, what the averages are doing, what the progress is that you're making, then you're going to feel better about it. You're going to not feel like, oh my gosh, I'm doing something wrong. You can make more objective decisions. Totally. And, and then you're going to have more control over preventing the weight gain mm -hmm. that you don't want that mm -hmm. that slow and steady weight gain that we talked about at the beginning so yeah so the important thing is don't make any changes at all to your strategy until you have at least those two to four weeks mm -hmm. in fact i would say if you're doing it on your own give it extra yeah. time because it's going to be harder for you to be objective about it it's definitely not easy but it's a way better plan it's than reacting super quickly to one day where your weight goes up because that's that's not going to work at all. It's it's easier with a coach, um, but you don't have to have one. And again, just if you if you if you want to guarantee that you're headed in the right direction and you don't have to think about like okay, am I doing this right? Should I change something? That's where we come in because we can just take care of all that for you, so you don't have to guess on it and figure it all out. We can help you lose fat, make sure that you're losing it from where you want to. Um, even the stubborn fat, uh, make sure you have more energy, make sure you're feeling strong and confident, make sure that you're eating better consistently, that it's something you can do long-term realistically, and that all of this is going to be healthy, that you're not just losing weight and then you're going to end up having health complications later on, which, which can definitely happen. So if you would like help with that, be sure to send us a message. Uh, otherwise, that is it. If you've got questions, leave a comment or send us a message on that too. And we'll, uh, we've got Q and A's or we can message you, whatever you prefer. But hopefully that helps understand yeah. what actually causes weight gain. I think it was helpful. Good. So hopefully they did too. All right. All right. Bye guys. Have a good rest of your day. See ya.